This is water now. I told you I stayed to have a camera. Oh, it's hot water. Emma Jane Young, my mother said. Yes, because Melly and Hilma were all born with Yeah, Melly and Hilma were almost one age. Melly and my sister. Did you find that? No, but I cracked. <laughs> and the whole lineup, I don't know whether, well, uh, who else was, there's a whole bunch of them on there. And Benjamin Hobel's on it, too. <laughs> what do you do? Sister Mrs. Zuma, I'll steal you. But I, I remembered you. I remember how. Yeah, I remember how. Yeah, you do. Yeah, I knew of him, but I wouldn't yeah. have known him now. Well, you knew his mother. Yeah. 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 You was going to buy it. I remember the jerk. <laughs> well, we were <laughs> sort of open. Oh, this is going to be. Grandpa, I'm sorry. Well, we were kind of old. But I think we got to do it. We eat yeast all that place. Yeah. They're fixing it up now. Oh. Somebody bought it and they're really fixing it up with siding on it. They were right home with it. Who bought it? 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 Who the chair is a little bit low, isn't it? No, just right, huh? <laughs> Come on, put you on the six o'clock news. Somebody just drive in. Yeah, we got everybody else. Down there playing on television. Oh, Tim. Looks like you were like sitting right in the car. Uh, Did you sit on the cat or something that you got all that hair on you? I don't know. Down. Place down. They were popping around. They were popping around. What's that husband of the Legion again? You ate something or something? Tonight. Tonight is it? Yeah, I think I better go home by way of Danville. Really? Right. That's right. Mm hmm. What's that guy doing over there? Here. Yeah. He's taking a picture. That's what he's doing. Yeah. I bet you he is. I bet you he doesn't have any hair on him. Good afternoon. <laughs> you bring something to eat. <laughs> hey, then I want to see this because I'll bet you 20 bucks because there's no film in it. <laughs> then you better let me put you on it. It's rolling. I can see the film in through the glass there. It's rolling. Why? You gonna let me put you on, Adam? No. You ever been on television? You're not gonna get me on that thing. You ever been on television? Hey, Kevin, you're gonna get me on that thing. I bet he didn't. You're gonna be a surprise. <laughs> not lately, I have already. What? There's a nice looking blonde so? up there that drives one of them. Uh, I suppose she's about 50 years old. 55, maybe. You're not going to get me. And I thought, by gosh, that's a German accent. So when she finished talking to the, with the woman behind her, I just threw out her for signs and a bit of a sprechen sie Deutsch. And she looked and smiled and said, no, but I was only five minutes from the border. I'm from Holland. And uh, I often heard him say about uh, Vincent Van Gogh, the uh, Holland Dutch artist. And uh, they, some said it's pronounced Van Gogh, some say it's pronounced Van Gogh. 
So I thought, boy, this Hollander will know. And I, I, I said to her about Vincent Van Gogh, and she said, who is that? And I thought, my gosh, so she is from Holland. On Hollywood Squares, they said to one of the guys, uh, true or false, that Van Gogh, the famous Dutch artist, slashed off an ear and mailed it to his girlfriend. He said, uh, yeah, that was his second call. You sneaky people. I guess there's another doctor. Look at that. What was his first one? about cat gut. I had looked that up in the dictionary. Now, why? Everything is a misnomer. Why do they call it cat gut that isn't made out of cat gut to start with? They said to Tom Poston, uh, how do you get cat, cat gut? Poston says, well, first you say, here, kitty, kitty, kitty. <laughs> He said, no. no, it's from the innards of sheep. And John Davidson says, by gosh, Tom, you're pretty smart. And he says, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was you will be awful I get this. Okay. What's his head like? Towards the end of the month, the chicken pot pie supper over at McClure is coming up. Try to make that a good I'll ask you something. Do you remember when Bob Burns from Van Buren, Arkansas, used to be on radio? Bob Burns? Yeah. I just don't ring a bell right now. I think that's where the Army got the name for the bazooka. It had like a homemade trombone. No, you stay out of the bush. And I've asked you, I don't know how many people, if they remember what his uncle he used to talk about, his name was. I remember it was his Aunt Fuji, and then Aunt Fuji's husband. Whoops. Over there at the chicken pot pie <laughs> supper last summer, up, kept going. Old, old Ida Coleman was there. She's in her 80s, and she's a very outgoing person, and always the same. We see her there. And she introduced us to a young fellow and his wife sitting across the table said, this is Reverend somebody and his wife. I don't remember Reverend who. My wife said, now you watch the stories you tell. <laughs> I said, this Bob Burns from Van Buren, Arkansas, saying to my Aunt Pooji and her husband, he said, that's my drinking uncle. She said, they've tried all kind of ways to get him to stop his drinking and nothing worked. Somebody said, well, some night you find a, sometime you find an empty grave in the cemetery. I worked in the cemetery when I got out of high school for a while. You weren't supposed to let a grave open. You were supposed to put boards across it for the next day. Kind of somebody falling. Said, one night when my uncle was dead drunk, somebody said, that'll really cure him if he's drinking if they put him in a, a grave and then when the, he finds out where he is. <laughs> So they said they took him out when he was plastered and put him in this open grave and then they hid behind the tombstones to wait for daybreak. And they said when the sun came over the hill, my uncle stood up in the grave and looked around and said, Well, I do declare, here it is Resurrection Day and I'm the first one up. <laughs> Old Mrs. Coleman says to the preacher, that you can tell in church on Sunday. <laughs> I had one of those the other week. I went to get something out of the refrigerator and spilled it and down all over the wife was mad enough to kill me. I had to take everything out and clean it out. And the whole day, didn't you ever have a day like oh, that? Yeah. Oh, yes. But I didn't have no chart to tell me what kind of a day it was going to be. Sorry. You would have been better to stay ahead and bed all day. I don't want any. And uh, there's a whole list of things that how you can tell if it's going to be a bad day or a lousy, rotten day. One of them is you, you can tell if it's going to be a rotten day if you get awake in the morning and find that your water bed has a leak in it. And then you remember you don't have a water bed. <laughs> You can tell if it's going to be a rotten day and you're <laughs> driving your car to work on the California freeway and the horn button on your car sticks and you're following the Hell's Angels. <laughs> that would be rough too, wouldn't it? How do you feel now? Oh, my. Oh, my. Anybody else that wants cake, there's a couple kinds of cake here in the kitchen table.
thought you were going to say anybody else wants to more ice cream. Go lay down to take their nap. Yeah, they yeah, they took the little ones. ones. Little kids <laughs> left. Home. What happened? Yeah, they took the little ones and went home. <laughs> I don't know if I'd said to you about the the uh, Avon lady that walked into the lobby of the hotel with her basket of Avon samples. She was waiting to see the manager, and while she was standing there, she was so full of gas, she didn't know what she was going to do. Finally, she thought, well, I'll get on the elevator, and if there's nobody on the elevator, she would get on the elevator and turn the blues. And she took a, a can of Avon spray pine scent out of her basket and sprayed it around in the elevator. When the elevator got up to the top floor and the door opened, a drunk stepped in and he says, What's that I smell? She says, That's Avon pine scent. He says, It smells like somebody just shit a Christmas tree. <laughs> eating here, there won't be anything left to eat. Really. Don't eat the plate. <laughs> I don't think I ever saw any of this. Uh, Open your mouth to squirt. <laughs> don't you want some cake or something yet? They said there's cake in there. I did bring him some. I don't like burgers, but I'll wait a while and what I ate. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> Jumping around, jumping around, and couldn't get out. That's John. So he sat down in the end of the grave. That's John. Thought, well, I'll wait till the workers come out in the morning. And while he was in there, another guy came along and <laughs> fell in. And he was jumping and dancing and trying to get out. And the other guy tapping him on, on the shoulder says, "No use, you can't get out." But he did. <laughs> <laughs> a Bordner stone up there. I don't know if I said to you about it. If you go up 7th Street to the end of the cemetery and turn left about halfway across, it's a, and then the first lot down is a, a big gray granite stone, Bordner. And I guess they've used this epitaph in a, on a lot of stones, but when I worked in the cemetery, maybe you've seen it, remember me as you pass by as you are now, so once was I. As I am now, so you must be. Prepare for death and follow me. And one day I went up there to mow grass and somebody rode underneath to follow you. I have no intent until I find which way you went. <laughs> <laughs> I wish I could be that witty to think of like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's a lot of that stuff around all over the country. There's, I think it's up in Massachusetts. It says, uh, Here lies Samantha Proctor. She catched a cold but wouldn't doctor. She couldn't stay. She had to go. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. <laughs> How do you remember all that? That's what I was Nonsense. Well, Anything that's nonsense, what ought to remember it? <laughs> My wife gets so mad at me. But you should remember you don't. Huh? No. <laughs> I said to the pharmacist over, so pharmacist over there at Red Drake's the other week that this little old lady went to the doctor and asked him to write out a prescription for pills. And the doctor said, well, those pills are habit for me. She said, they are not, and I ought to know. I've been taking them for 20 years. 
<laughs> Ray got a bang out of that. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> now number ten, come on. <laughs> She's waiting for the next one. <laughs> Well, they said there, there's a tombstone out in, in Ohio that says, To a dentist, view this stone with gravity. He is filling his last cavity. <laughs> oh. You think of, uh, you know, you're as good as he Oh. He's really something, he is, isn't he? He is. He's always pulling at his red tie. That's yeah, the thing he, he's a nervous wreck. <laughs> <laughs> sure is. <laughs> I don't think that I'd said to her about... In Scotland, they call a, a flashlight a torch. Yeah, well, the English call a truck a Lowry. They have different names for things, too. But the English call a flashlight a torch. This old, or the Scots, this old Scotsman's wife was just about due to have a baby, and she started to go into labor pains, and she said to the hired man, quick, help me get her down to the garage and put her in the car to take her to the hospital. And... They got her down the garage, and before they got her in the car, the baby started to come. Oh. And the old Scotsman says, get the torch, get the torch, the flashlight. <laughs> and the hired guy came with it, and pretty soon the baby was born. About that time, a second one came, oh. and pretty soon a third one oh, came. Oh, my gosh. The old Scotsman said to the hired, hired guy, turn off the torch, I think it's the light that's attracting them. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, you often heard him say that a baby can be affected if the mother's scared during pregnancy. There's a couple of these women sitting there talking. The one says, uh, I, I know a woman that was uh, scared when she was about five months pregnant by a fire, and when the baby was born, it had red fire marks all over its body. The other woman said, yeah, I know a woman that was scared by a mad dog while she was pregnant, and when the baby was born, it had hair on his face like a dog, and all this sort of thing. This young guy had overheard it, and he said, that stuff's all a lot of baloney. He said, when my mother was carrying me, just before I was born, she was walking across the living room floor and stumbled over a pile of stereo records and broke every one, and it never affected me. Affected me. Affected me. <laughs> Two scrambled eggs, a couple pieces of toast, and a cup of hot coffee. <laughs> and waitress went out to the kitchen to give the order to the cook, and the cook looked in the refrigerator and says, My gosh, we've only got one egg left. <laughs> the waitress says, Oh, there's an old piece of Limburger cheese. Mix that up with it. Oh, as drunk God. as he is, he'll never know the difference anyway. <laughs> so he, she took the order out to him, and the drunk started to eat, and he went to the waitress. <laughs> She came over and says, what's the trouble? He says, w w where do you get your eggs? She says, oh, we have our own chickens out back here. He says, do you have any roosters? She says, no, we don't have any roosters. He says, well, you better get some, because I think the skunks are getting after your chickens. Well, it's a little bit different than that. <laughs> Uh, do you, do you rem 
remember, uh, <laughs> you remember Adam T. Bauer? Huh? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you remember Adam T. Bauer? I've heard yeah. the main bitch from Field Grove. The politician. Yeah. 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 Was he from Field Grove? No, he's a no. politician somewhere. Uh, somewhere. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's, that's right. right. We'll keep going. <laughs> <laughs> well. <laughs> There was an S.R. Johnson. He's dead now already. I don't know if you remember back years ago they had the state highway patrol. They used Indian motorcycles. Do you remember yeah. that? And they had the state constabulary. They wore the like Sherlock Holmes hats with a visor in the front and the back. And then they merged and made it the Pennsylvania State Police. And this S.R. Johnson rode motorcycles was in the state highway patrol and he looked after Adam T. Bauer's dogs. He had uh, English bulldogs mm -hmm. and th this S.R. Johnson was an alcoholic. It's a wonder he didn't kill himself. He, he could, one day he was ready. I only ever heard him tell one story. He, he was ready to leave. The motorcycle was out front and I walked along out with him and he said, this new family this moved to town and this young boy started in school the first day and I don't know what he did and the teacher says, I'm going to tell your father about this. And the kid says, my father's dead. He said, oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What, what did he die of? And he said, the kid says, gonorrhea. <laughs> and and the, the teacher said, oh, no, you mean diarrhea. He said, no, this was gonorrhea. My dad was a sportsman, not a shit ass. <laughs> I guess he realized that the minute you started to take the picture, the nickels were flying, so he tried to get as much on as he could, and he just sat there like this, and my gosh, pretty soon you were dizzy trying to... What's the thing? Mom's maybe. She's long dead and gone. Well, she must be. <laughs> she used to come out on Jack Parr shows years ago in oh, the bedroom. Mom's maybe, yeah. Long, long dress and their bonnet, and so they ain't all sexy. Um, said this old maid every night she'd go to bed, she'd look under her bed. <laughs> One night she looked under the bed, and there was a man under there. She says, What do you want? I hope. <laughs> sit in here and drink coffee on a cold snowy day and just look out that across there. Yeah. Huh? I'm glad you said cold. <laughs> yeah. It's been so stinking hot. But now tonight it isn't so much uh, nice. not so much humidity. That's I guess I had said to them about the farmer and his wife were having a masquerade party one night and asked them some of the people in the other farms there come to it. 
You've seen these horse suits and cow suits. That one person gets in the front, oh, yeah, the other yeah, gets yeah, in the back. Yeah. And uh, this one farmer and his wife had a cow suit, and he got in the front of it, and she got in the back, and they started trotting out across the field to the farmer's place where they're having the masquerade. And uh, he looked up and says, Oh my gosh, there comes a bull on the run. He said, Oh my word, what are we going to do now? He said, Well, I'm going to start eating grass and you brace yourself. told a joke and he says that was one of my father's jokes and the guy says are you one of your mothers <laughs> I suspect that maybe General Gavin will be there for that. I'd like to shake hands with that fellow. One um, of the fellows was in the shop the other week. His name is Dorkoski. I don't know why I never took any pictures when the White's brother was crew chief on the plane that brought him you up to Sunbury Airport. Beatles has it. What? Oh. Yeah. How good that? Uh, you're listening. <laughs> I just wanted to put the beat and stuff away so it wouldn't spoil. <laughs> well, it's like uh, Doc Deardorff said one time about in the summertime with diarrhea and everything. He said the people let the uh, potato salad in the hot trunk of their car a little too long. Oh boy, the bugs don't wait. They start working right away. <laughs> that, that's that's true. I say about you probably remember with the the tea men. How many of them? Yes, yes. The Larkins man and the Golden Key and what oh, were some of the others? There's a bunch of uh, uh, Raleigh man. Watkins had them. Yeah, what my brothers? Yeah. Watkins, Raleigh, McNeese, McNeese. Well, he I used to come the around. The Pain King man. Remember yeah. Him? Oh, hey. Um, Amanda Hummel, that, she's yes. one of my painting. Oh, yes, she always had a painting on her. Mm -hmm. Um, Grandma. Well, you know, they used to come around with a horse and buggy. Yeah, oh, yes, I remember that. And they say Grandpa was so crazy about chocolate candy. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> when they, the guy come with his wagon and he's where's Grandpa come down, he saw all this and it was. What, what's the white chocolate candy that? Excellent. Excellent. He Excellent. took a whole box of it. Oh. Took oh. off with it and ate the whole work. Oh my God. God. A couple of weeks later, <laughs> the tea man came around again and uh, he said he asked if he used their privy. The outside privy. Come running back in and said, uh, Your grandpa's out there and he's dead. Oh. They said, yeah, we know, but he just ain't done shitting yet. <laughs> <laughs> That's terrible. Yeah, he's using my ear. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! 
The other week I saw something that I really enjoyed on TV in the morning. Do uh, you remember the Lockheed Lightning P-38s with the two-in-line liquid-cooled Allison engines? Uh, they said about 200 and some guys met, I think it was in California, that were pilots on them in World War II. Yeah. And uh, said to the one old guy about it, he said, well, it's over 40 years since I flew one of them. And then it showed a couple of them. Oh, beautiful sound of those engines. Yeah. Do you have jobs you started uh, years ago and never finished? I have some, so many jobs I started and I never lived long enough to get them done. Um, I brought some along to show you. 108 millimeter shells, about like this. I started that in Germany, the whole thing made with shells. I started that in Bremen, Germany, and I didn't finish it yet. That's, that's <laughs> over 40 years ago. Yeah, I brought it along to show to you. You, you, you better get moving. You better get that job done. I'm so tired of hurry up quick, let's go. I call her Hafta and I'm gotta. She Hafta and I gotta. All the stuff we gotta do all the time. She says, well, do you think the hardware stores are in the pl plumbing places are stocking all this stuff just for us? I said, no, I guess other people are fixing too. <laughs> but uh, the unpredictable chaos of everyday living, you, you, you go to bed at night and you wonder what's it going to be tomorrow morning. <laughs> now, that dang clothes dryer, squeak, 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 squeak. <laughs> That's what I say, I'm sick of fixing. <laughs> How about you, Bernard? <laughs> well, you just have to break down and buy our new one. Yeah. <laughs> Trade it in. Well, there's one thing you can be pretty sure of. Now, you can hurry up and run as fast as you can and gather up a couple nickels, and you can be pretty sure that the doctors and the hospitals and the nursing homes are going to get it. <laughs> we have a, a school teacher that's up there in Nottingham Village, and uh, she had over a quarter of a million dollars when she went in there, and it's nearly all gone. I guess she's living too long. Who is that? Who is that? Anna Zerby. Oh, oh, you mean that, that tech must be expensive. Well, my mother was in liters, and it was about seventy dollars a day. More than that now. Yeah. 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 That's sad, isn't it? Yes, it is. I, you heard about it, but I don't know if she did, about the three old fellows sitting in the nursing home talking. Mm -hmm. One says, I get up in the morning, I have so much trouble doing number one. I have prostate gland trouble and it just dribbles out. <laughs> the second, second one that says, no, I have more trouble doing number two and I get such pain in through here. The third one says, well, with me about 7 o'clock in the morning, number one flows out like the Mississippi River. <laughs> about 7.30, number two's like the eruption at Mount St. Helens. The other two said, so what's the problem? He says, I don't get out of bed till 9 o'clock. <laughs> Boy, I don't know if that's funny. That needs to be here. Oh my! How long was your mother in the leaders? I didn't even know she was. I in don't know. She was in the hospital, and then she was down there. My, now, see, my, what I'm supposed to remember, I don't. Now, my wife could tell you. <laughs> Join the crowd, honey. See, Marie worked there a while. I guess that's why she's squeezing him. Well, uh, Emma and Leon's daughter is the administrator. Yes, Sandra. Yeah, yeah. She was my boss when I worked there. Oh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, Leon has, uh, what is it called, sleep apnea. Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Well, it's not the same as narcolepsy or sleeping well, sickness. Um, yeah, something yeah, they, 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 they don't get enough oxygen. Um, Dr. Shrek is it there at the Sunbury Hospital had it and was down to uh, Hershey Medical Center. 
and they operated on them, and they put a hole in here, well, they did and then they give you a plug, yeah. yeah. It yeah. has like a button on it there yeah. so it won't go clear through. Yeah. And uh, Emma said I'd get him his breakfast in the morning, and he'd sit there, and the next thing you know, he's sound asleep. Uh-huh. So he was down and they uh, did the operate. I was, saw Emma and Leon over at the Winfield Fireman's Carnival. Yeah, we talked to him. Yeah, we talked well, you know, to him last Wednesday. Oh, did you? Yeah. yeah. And he said, he said, I lay down at night and he said, I, I stopped breathing. He said, one of these times I'm going to wake up and find out I, I'm dead. <laughs> but, uh, if, if he has that, that plug out there, then he can't talk. Yeah. Oh. Emma says, if I want to shut him up, I just pull the plug out. <laughs> I he says at night if after we're in bed and I want to talk to her, I just hold my finger over it. <laughs> yeah. He had that for quite a while. That hole in his neck. I don't know. About two years ago? Yeah, about two years ago. Two, for sure. Boy, I enjoy that Winfield Carnival. Mm -hmm. We go over every night. They have good food there and every year it's the same. Carnival. Yeah. That's why they had the auction the other night. Yeah. I don't know. Did they yeah. have an auction there? Yeah, they're supposed to have an auction there. Uh, Tuesday night of this week? They don't they have an auction. It'll be every week there. Oh, is it every week? I think right. so. The sign said here. Oh, well, then I'm wrong there. about that, Junior. I thought it was. Yeah, I, I thought, too, it was every, every week. Well, I can tell the sign more well, than what, what kind of an auction is it? I mean, is it people bring I don't know. I, uh, we were up to Stahl's auction Saturday before last. Uh, have you ever been up to that? No. Go into Mifflinburg, come to that gas station, and turn right like you're going over to... Uh... Arts Hill? Yeah. Say. <laughs> Gee, they got lost quick, didn't they? <laughs> they get out there a little ways, and there's a sign, Stahl's auction. And, I uh, think I've heard of it already, but it's... Great big building, and I think they have all old movie theater seats in there. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kenny Stahl's wife is uh, cooking. There's a restaurant right on the same building there, off in another room. And very good food. <coughs> um, but Did my guy sitting there and listening to that guy. <laughs> I can't take too much of that. Huh? Why don't you get up and take his job? How about you, Darlene? Do you hate that? Hear that, too? Is that where you had your mother's auction at Stalls? Yeah. Things you thought would bring money didn't bring, and anything and th things you thought wouldn't did. Mom's market basket. You know what we're about? Like yeah, that. yeah. Made out of reed or yeah. whatever. No, that brought $40. $40. No My dad's meat saw. One dollar. Yeah, that you thought would be, yeah. If I'd known that, I'd have kept it. Yeah. And then he had to steal, you know, for sharpening knives, and I brought four dollars, but I should have kept that, too. But it, you, you get old. I hate to buy another tool for fear I ain't gonna live long enough to use it. <laughs> what did the washstand bring? I don't know. I have, I, I made a list of the whole work. I just wondered, even they, though they live in Atlanta, they'd love to buy a washstand. With the towel rack. With the towel rack, you know. The old, oh! You know, where you put your well, the on. daughter said about what she wanted until she got done while well, there wasn't too much left. <laughs> but it could keep it in the family. Well, yeah, that's yeah. a good um, idea. I don't blame anybody. Yeah, there was another one. And uh, it was a washstand. And, this way and the oh, thing for the towel rack. Right? Yeah. But the wife kept the pitcher and the yeah, bowl. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there you there you the pitcher and bowl. Yeah. The pitcher and bowl. Yeah. 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 I think yeah. So. I think they sell them. I remember my grandmother had one. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. My mom had two. She's asking. Oh yeah. Uh, good, man. Yeah. 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 Marie knows. Yeah. Bo I know. Always in the bootlegging business and the slot machine business. Well, the Lutheran Church there. Great Lutheran. Yeah, across from the Squeeze yeah, Head. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, they call that the church with the whiskey chimes because Willard Lively donated the, those chimes to the church uh, in his uh, mother's, uh, in oh, honor of his mother. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
In America, the horse company donates needs money there every year. They used to. Which church is that for? The Great Lutheran. Oh. Is that a lot of Lutheran churches up here? Mm, just about. And is, is he over there? Well, I suppose it's like Benjamin Franklin said that Pennsylvania is half English, half Scotch Irish, and half German. That I think is about right. Yeah, yeah. I'm, that's about right. Pretty, don't you? Yeah, it sounds nice. Yeah. Some guy from down, you know, they always say about the Southern Baptists. There's a lot of Baptists down there. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's me, you tell you. Well, here's this one. I'm one. I don't know who the guy was on a program was on down south. It said uh, they put a sign out in front of the Baptist church. If you're tired of sin, come on in. And said somebody, uh, by a woman wrote underneath, if you're not, call number so and so. Said they were having revival meetings and they had the balcony there. And <laughs> yeah, this was on uh, the Atlanta station, I think. <laughs> and CNN, uh, maybe. Yeah. And the guy said. This woman up in the balcony got so excited, got religion, and she fell off the balcony and she grabbed onto the chandelier and the preacher says, Don't anybody look up or you'll go blind! And one guy says, I can, ri ri I guess I can risk one eye. Be careful with blind one. <laughs> in Germany it varies. The, the word for plumber down along the Rhine River is Spengler, and up in Bremen along the North Sea, they never heard of it. It's Klempner up there. Oh, so good. <laughs> Can you count in German a little ways? I can count no less in German. <laughs> you mean I'm sorry, I've heard of him. Zach Well, he's Go ahead. These two Germans, uh, escaped during the war and got on a ship and went to Australia and they thought if they learned to speak English real well they could work their way back to Germany and nobody would even know that they were German. So they picked the language up real well and on the way back the ship stopped in England and they went in an English pub or a bar room and they said to the bartender, uh, give us two martinis. The bartender says, dry. He says, no, it's fine. <laughs> That's how quick you can forget yourself. <laughs> my cousin Margaret, she's my dad's sister's daughter, and she's a nice person. And uh, she's in bad shape and is up in Nottingham. Yeah. And uh, she was showing me a an album one time with some pictures. One was of her husband, Jimmy Caldwell, and another one of Uncle George Mull. In fact, the wife and I went down to where they lived along the foot of the mountain in Middle Creek just last Sunday on the motorcycle. When I walked up, the woman, the young woman was in the yard, and I said, uh, doesn't George Mull and uh, his wife Pearl live here anymore? And she said, oh, they're dead long away. I said, yeah, I know. <laughs> Anyway, when Margaret showed me this picture of her husband Jimmy and our Uncle George Mull, I said, Uncle George played the violin, don't you remember? But he only knew two songs, Turkey and the Straw and the Dying Hobo. Margaret said, no, he knew three. I said, well, what was the third one? And I never knew this. She said, well, don't you remember Aunt Pearl was so crazy about the fellow who lived on the farm up above them? And Uncle George would get out his violin and play, Oh, where's my wandering boy tonight? And Aunt Pearl would get so mad, and I never knew about that. <laughs> it was true, huh? How is Margaret? But you wonder how many things like that you don't know. Paul, yeah. oh, how is Margaret? Not very good. I think he sold her home now. Was she a sister to you, Dad? Yeah, they had to sail on that stuff last Saturday night, a week oh, ago. Where they held that sale? Not Spirit a Stalls Auction. Oh, is that where they had yeah. those things, too? Mm -hmm. See, she lives next door to our daughter. Yeah, so that's where she, she lives. Our daughter lives next door. Oh. Yeah. Well, you know, 
Aunt Minnie was so good-hearted, Margaret's mother. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew her too. And uh, did you know Maggie you from Williamsport? No. Married to Claire Fisher. Aunt Minnie said, "I wish I had as many nickels as they have dollars, because Uncle Claire always had money." And like the old saying was, they'd skin a louse for the fat. Yeah. <laughs> I used and to hear it skin a louse for the hide. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> uh, when Uncle Claire died, Aunt Maggie, Minnie came down and lived with Aunt Maggie came down and lived with Aunt Minnie. Oh, did she? For well, that, about two I years or more. Her. And if. Margaret would get uh, anything at the store for her boy if she was short one green stamp. She was complaining about it. And she lived there for two years or more. And Margaret washed her hair and put it up, trimmed her nails and all that. Well, the wife used to run her up to Williamsport to the eye doctor, too. And she never gave them a cent <laughs> for all that time. And one night, Margaret and Maggie were watching TV on one of those giveaway shows, and the, the prize was $2,500. My Aunt Maggie was very Dutchified. Yeah. And Margaret said, Ma Aunt Maggie, what would uh, you have done with the money if you'd have won that $2,500? Well, they had two kids. Gerald and I were about the same age, Gerald and Jack. Aunt Maggie said, Well, I would give a thousand dollars to Charles and a thousand dollars to Chat, and I'd keep the five hundred dollars for myself. Margaret says, Aunt Maggie, I don't love you any less, but that's just what I thought you'd say. <laughs> uh, I didn't know Maggie, but I remember. I am. I just I'll call off my side, and you just call off the next size bigger. Get on the pants, he said, pants, and one guy says, 30, and one guy says, 32. But the morning said, this is going to work out all right. They got the jackets, one guy says, 42, the other guy says, 44. But the morning, yeah, this is working out good. And then he says, the caps, one guy says, 6 and 7 8, the other guy says, 9 10, 11. <laughs> And I don't know why, the longer I thought about that, the funnier it got. <laughs> hey, there were guys like that in there. The Orientals have... Uh, I know it. R. R. Corbin, is it? Huh? R. R. Corbin. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's our son. He just is that what he says? Oh, Richard. Paul Haynes, Sparky Hughes, and has the yeah. cycle shop. Uh -huh. This is our son, R. R. Corbin. <laughs> I know. Really, boy, he must be a working man. He had almost broke the bones in my hand. <laughs> and here's his wife, Teresa. How do you do? Uh, Paul and... Uh, don't they? The camera, do, the camera doesn't go click, it goes crick. <laughs> well, they say fly slim. Chinese slim. Yeah, well, this Fly Oriental slim. went into the, the restaurant every morning and said to the wait, waiter, uh, give me a bowl of flied light. <laughs> yeah, flied light. Fly, fly, one, fly. one morning, the waiter says, why don't you learn to talk English? They didn't see anything in the Oriental for about three months. One morning, the Oriental came in and says, give me a bowl of fried rice, you lotten flick. <laughs> Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> these, these, uh, 
businessmen were having a convention in this hotel in town. And the one businessman ordered up a steak and he got it and it was kind of rancid and bad, but he ate it. Boy, it started to get through him. And there was a fellow with a hair lip work at the hotel. And this guy said to the guy that worked there, hey, quick, can you tell me where the toilet is? And the one you get out here at the end of the hall, and up that first line of stairs is the third door on the right hand side. And the guy started to run and went to take off, and he lost it, and there was crap over the carpet all the way down, up the stair steps, and all the way to the bathroom. Oh my God. The manager of the hotel said to the fellow that worked there, well, I want you to go and tell and tell this fellow that uh, you're awful. We're awful sorry about what happened, and we realize that it wasn't his fault. And that any time he's in this town, he shouldn't hesitate to make this hotel his home away from home. So he went down, rapping the guy's door. He says, "Well, the man in your son, I can tell you, he's awful sorry about what happened." And, uh, you shouldn't feel mad. He hoped that any time you're in town here, you shouldn't hesitate to make this hotel your home away from home. Now, that, that's what the manager said, and I'd like to give him my own opinion. If, if anything like this ever happens again, for God's sake, stand still! <laughs> I'll bet if you work there, you won't be had. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> what do you see? He said, an English soldier, when he is talking with a French milkmaid, now he is holding her hand. Now they are walking over into the field. Now they are reclining in the grass. This is going to take a while. <laughs> now that he moved that over, would you hand it over for a refill? I'm just lying and bragging my mouth's getting dry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Up, she says, Shut out of your mouth, I'm a talking to your mother. <laughs> and Danny Thomas says, I had such pain in my right leg, I went to the doctor and said to him about it. And he says, Well, look, Danny, you got to remember, you're getting older. And he says, And I said, well, then why don't I have pain in my left leg? It's just as old as my right one. <laughs> How much grass do you have to mow here? Too much. That's the way I, well, the wife does it out there. This is the riding mower. What, what, what do we have? Almost six acres yet? Well, you don't mow six acres. <laughs> well, most of us. Down there? Well, counting the field, you mow that with a big mower. Well, how many acres is it? I don't know. I never measured it. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, don't we, we don't mow the corn. Is a big mower to try to get. That's yours down there. Five and five-eighth inches. Five and five-eighth inches, and we mow it all now. Is that yours down there with that corn that's come up? We don't mow this field out here. What's in corn, we don't mow. You're right. You're right. Is that yours down there where the corn has come up? No. Don't do that. 
How come you didn't put mine in this year? I don't How, why yeah. didn't you put any in this year? I think the government came to little play. I don't know. I don't know. But I don't know. This wealthy woman was having a party for her girlfriend. She invited over for an afternoon, and she made arrangements with some enter for some entertainers to entertain her girlfriends. And the entertainers didn't show up. She looked out the window and saw the, the crew that she had mowing grass and trimming hedges and around the rose bushes and stuff. And saw this one guy doing flip -flop flops, cartwheels, and handsprings. And thought, boy, that guy's pretty good. I wonder if he entertained my girlfriend this afternoon. So she went out and says, the foreman, I've been watching your buddy over there doing the flip-flop cartwheels and hand springs. Uh, do you think he'd entertain my girlfriends this afternoon? Foreman says, hey, Charlie, do you think he could stand another rap in the crotch with the rake handle? <laughs> <laughs> trying to be logical in an illogical world. And uh, I gave him some explanation of what I was saying, so I guess he went in the, they have a place there where the prisoners of the machine shop or something, and he made me up a little plate that's really well made, too. It looks like a professional job of, of uh, I gave up trying to be logical in an illogical world. I said, my dad never smoked, never drank, very clean with his habits, and uh, age 33 fell over dead over there in the railroad yards. And there was Morris Gambling that lived a second house from us, smoked pipes and cigarettes for years and was an alcoholic that I swear he was drunk more than he was sober. But I always liked Morris. He never hurt anybody. And he's up in his 80s, still living. <laughs> so I... I don't know how you, it, it just doesn't figure out. <clears throat> I had uh, Chris Lehman from up between Alwood and Nielsport. I wish he'd have brought him down. Uh, he works up more business forms, and I had his papers with the letters on it. I, can, I, I can't give it to you word for word. <clears throat> but I had to give it to him. He was down the night before last. He said, I, I got them, and they lay on the table up home, forgot to bring them along, and made off these copies about <clears throat> you smoke cigarettes and the residue of the cigarettes I have to breathe this you do without my permission now I like to drink a beer once in a while and the residue do of beer is urine now how would you like if I stood on a chair and pissed down over your head and clothes without your permission <laughs> That might not be word for word, but that you get the idea. <laughs> oh, <boy. laughs> I like it. <laughs> you keep trying to figure it out, but I don't think you ever will. No. Was your dad only 33? And, uh... He raps on the door, and a real sexy-looking babe comes to the door, and she's all dressed in black. He said, why are you wearing black clothes? She says, because of my dear departed husband. Oh, how long has he been departed? About uh, 15 minutes. Come on in. <laughs> We're <laughs> there, and yeah. one says, uh, "Who gets you awake in the morning?" Says, "My wife does. She opens the door and lets the dog in, and that wakens you. It sure does. I sleep with the cat." <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Minnie Pearl and that sexy brunette sits there with her pencil paper. Yeah. This guy walks in and says to Minnie about a job. And he says, okay, you're hired. I am? Yep. Good. What do you want me to do? And he says, take out the garbage. He said, take out the garbage, but I'm a college graduate. And he says, that's all right. Honey, do there. I'll show you how to do it. <coughs> that's about the way it is. <coughs> <coughs> I think I said, too, when I saw you about the teacher said to the little boy to stand up and spell shirt. The kid stood up and said, S-H-R-S-H-S-A-T. -S -S teacher said, sit down, who can spell shirt? The little girl raised her hand, stood up and said, S-H-I-R-T. The teacher said, that's right. She said to the little boy, now you stand up and spell it. The kid got up and said, S-H-I-T-T. -T. And the little girl said, teacher, you should have left good enough alone. Now he can't spell shit. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, that's the age to be, ain't it? I don't know. Like my old buddy said, you think anybody could stand two lifetimes of this nonsense? I don't think I could. Don't matter. It's rough and cruel. Yeah, they do. I think the young people still come up in this. Yeah. yeah, what a day and age. I I think most of the problems today you can tie in with overpopulation. 1940, the population of the world was around 2 billion people. And they said here a month or so ago that it would reach five billion by August, but the other day they said it reached it before August got here. Mm -hmm. Mike, uh, no pleasure to drive anymore. Everybody's in everybody's way. <laughs> and that stretch, like when we went down over to McClure last Sunday, I hate that stretch from the traffic circle to Sealands Grove. That is madness. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yep. It is. That's the golden strip over there. Yeah, it sure is. You wonder how much of your life you're spending setting the traffic li uh, lights and stop signs waiting for the parade to go by till you can start out. That's right. Um, it's been a number of years ago. Um, Mrs. Long that lived down the street from us there had an Oldsmobile 88. And it was a beautiful afternoon, I think it was in October. The wife was ironing and had the radio on, heard about an accident down at 4th and Duke Street. And that was right close to where Aunt Minnie lived, or Margaret there, yeah. 370 Duke oh, Street. Oh, yeah, that's, well, you know where it is. Sydney's so we went down. This is, Mrs. Long came down there with her car and turned left to get down Duke Street, came right on up over the curb. Missed the big brick house in the corner, and there Woody Clingers tore down the front porch in through the living room and out the other side. That happened. Nelson Bruce. That happened right before we bought that house. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Then what? Mm -hmm. Well, Nelson Bruce and I were in school together. He lived down at East Stroudsburg, and he, I, he was such a witty guy, and he was so dry with stuff, and he was up a couple days after this happened. And I was telling him about it, and he knew Long. I said, she went down there with her car and turned left to get on Duke Street, came right on around, up over the curb, and missed the big brick house on the corner. There at Woody Clingers, tore down the front porch, in through the living room, smashed up the television set, oh, and no. out the other side of the house, but by gosh, she didn't hit any of the three women in there. Nelson says, yeah, and they say she can't drive. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Camp Lever, no, Camp Reynolds, out near the Ohio line. Um, they have those Saturday morning inspections, and they have those little eight by ten windows. Man, if you didn't get all the dirt out of every little crack and corner on there, you, they'd take away your liberty or you pass it. You couldn't go away over the weekend. And after inspection, first sergeant said, "Everybody, fall out!" Out there, lined up. First sergeant says. Company commander checked the barracks and everything's a mess, everything's filthy. Well, they weren't really. And all weekend, liberties and passes have been canceled. Oh, God. Some guy says, give me liberty or give me death. First sergeant says, who said that? Patrick Henry. <laughs> Always he some that. witty guy every outfit. Patrick Henry, he said He said yeah. <laughs> 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 I I could never think fast. I could all if I talk on the telephone I can always think of what I should have said after I hung up. Should call back. Yeah. Oh I'd get rid of the telephone if it wouldn't be for the wife. The telephone, the calendar and the clocks are what's running you into the grave. <laughs> <laughs> and the clock. Mm -hmm. Hurry up, quick, let's go. Yeah. I, I heard Billy Graham say that even though Alexander Graham Bell invented the telephone, he never had one and he didn't want any. <laughs> and they say that uh, Alexander Graham Bell went to bed with his wife and his wife said, your three minutes are up. <laughs> Huntsville, Alabama, been up in Boston, and when he was out in Indiana, Indianapolis, sometime he'd go by plane, sometime by bus. Last summer he was down to Huntsville, Alabama on the motorcycle, and when it, the year it was out in Indianapolis, he said on the way home he stopped at a restaurant and truck oh, stop. Hey. Went in and he said. I sat down in the commode and somebody that was a very good artist drew a picture of a naked woman up on the wall. And then like they talk in the funny papers in big letters up here, it said, how would you like to kiss a pair of lips like these? <laughs> and then little smaller letters down here, it said, like, how would you like to handle a pair like this? And he said in real small letters down the crotch and he said, I went like this, it says, you are now shitting at a 45 degree angle. <laughs> That'd make you feel stupid, wouldn't it? Dry with the stuff that he says. Uh, we were to Charlie Hackenberg over on the other side of New Berlin Mountain last summer and said to Charlie, where's a good place to get dinner? And Charlie said, well, I hear this restaurant down here. We're going out in New Berlin changed hands, it's all cleaned up. They say the food's very good in there, so we went down. <clears throat> Sign outside said special for the day, hot beef sandwiches and fries and coffee, and it was very good. <clears throat> Renner says, there was a young waitress in there. Renner says, I think this waitress we had is pretty nice. I think I'm going to leave her a big tip. Besides that, she gave you the bill. <laughs> but he's all hard. <laughs> oh. Oh, 
Where about the bill? <laughs> he is sure a good-hearted guy. You've never been told off. Well, <clears throat> their living room was a very large. The dining room wasn't very big. <clears throat> High ceilings. They always had a big Christmas tree. And Renner worked back in the backyard for Huffman up there, welding and all that sort of thing. And uh, Renner's a genius. He can do anything. He welded in the shipyards. I had a, I just amazed at the guy. Anyway, um, he made, he, I think he used an old Brockway truck steering wheel and made a base for the Christmas tree in the way he set the whole thing up. And when they put up the tree, and they usually put it up ways before Christmas, and Mary says, I wonder if we ought to tie it back. Renner says, well, I, I don't think you need to with the base that he made for it. Had it all trimmed. Said she came out in the shop one day. And I said, "What's the matter? Your Christmas tree fall over?" Said, I had no idea that it had. He said, "Oh, is that the wrong thing to say?" <laughs> like if this was a living room, here's a dining room, and here's a kitchen. There's an archway here and an archway here. The kitchen doors over there, and the steel kitchen sink there, and the casement window over the sink. And the Christmas tree was over in this corner, and then over in this corner was the cat's chair. Mary always kept a clean towel on there, and that was the cat's chair. Yeah. Well, when the Christmas tree fell over, it scared the cat so bad, and Mary, oh, she was a good housekeeper and a good cook. That cat went flying out through there, and the she always kept that linoleum wax, and the floor was so slippery, and the cat wanted to get over toward the door over there and flew up against the sink, and it knocked the crap out of the cat. But Renner says, oh, my God, was she mad. She hit the fan, eh? You're darn right. Well, I wonder if I have to go by way of Danville. Why? Oh, they're having the fireworks over there tonight. Oh, that's right. See, that's just down the road from us a little bit. There. It'll yeah. be boom, boom, bang, bang. That's right. Well, right. there's not a lot of parking along the road, for one thing, you say. Yeah, but they'll be parked up on the old road, too. Yeah, they